Hey guys, it's been a few months since I had my retail store. As many of you know, I I mean, the retail store was good. I didn't get to buy things at really cheap prices, so I guess that was a big advantage. But um, now in hindsight, I have a more, you know, it's very emotional. And very few people tell you, hey, I op opened Magic Store and it failed in a year, which is what happened. So there's no doubt in my mind that... Um, Given the profit and the margins, we did have a profitable month. We did have our first profitable month uh, right before COVID, but um, it's really difficult. It, 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 I mean, in terms of businesses, I've owned all types of businesses. I still own businesses. I've owned um, a meal delivery company. I've owned a photography agency that did weddings and other things, um, birthday parties. And I've done a lot of business. Obviously, I own a marketing agency right now. And I've never had a business like retail. Retail is an absolute landmine in terms of what can happen. And it's all bad. There's never like any good news. And there's right now, when you look at retail today, um, and you look at JCPenney, Sears, um, any of these retail stores, you could, you could pick one, uh, Neiman Marcus. Um, they're not doing well today, so what chance does a Magic the Gathering store have? So let me repeat you again. All these, you know, these are publicly traded, investor-backed, with billions of dollars behind them, um, like Kmart or Toys R Us, and they can't survive. Now, you... You might say, oh, they didn't do X, they didn't do Y, but, but they have business degrees. They have smart, supposedly smart people that they're paying tens of millions of dollars to figure this out. Your local game store just has that one owner. And if there's multiple owners, it has two owners. Uh, it's unlikely that either one has a business degree. It is very unlikely either one has a business plan. And if you asked, what, do you, what is your profit margin on this product? They probably wouldn't know. If you ask what is your break even in revenue that you need to make a year, they probably don't know the answer. If you ask what product do you sell the most, what product do you sell the least, they probably don't know that. I mean, in, in a retail environment where supply, you know, supply and inventory management is so important because everyone wants a new product and any old product is not going to sell. I mean, you still have retail stores that are holding your magic stores that have cases and cases of Dragon Maze and cases and cases of these really terrible sets. And yet, you know, supposedly everyone's making a bunch of money on selling magic cards, right? Um, so I will go ahead and say, you know, I have a um, very strong respect to anyone who owns a game store. Uh, it's really a passion. It's there's no way you can retire from owning a game store. Um, there's just not it's not possible in today's day, given the rent, given you know the retail, the online. Even if you did everything perfectly, even if you did the digital side perfectly, you will have haters. And this I think this is what happened to this company, uh, Chicago. What is it called? Chicago Style Gaming. I see their tweets all the time. Uh, one of uh, my subscribers is a really big fan, and then, of course, um, he sent me this information to let me know that they're getting out of Magic as well um, due to the toxic nature. There are people in this community who do not exist in any other community who specifically target you and want you to fail. There are people who watch this video or they, they subscribe just to dislike this video. There are people who leave very nasty comments, even though no one can see them, but you can see the little comment section. And sometimes like it will say like two comments, but like you only see one comment. It's because they've been shadow banned, right? There are people in this community who spend their time, their free time, instead of bettering themselves or getting, um, you know, a skill or learning something, going on my channel and disliking every single video. I have never seen this before in any other community. And again, K-pop, generally very positive individual. We never had a single individual like this that I've just mentioned, which is very common. Um, anime, 
again, we, I mean, sometimes people get really, really annoyed when you say their anime or their waifu is not cool and your waifu is better and blah, 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 blah. But like, at, no one's going to leave you a fake review. They're just going to just, you know, talk about it. I mean, in Magic the Gathering, you get left fake reviews like anything. I've never seen something where people who have never come to the store and never ordered online are leaving fake reviews because they saw on Reddit something bad ha happened. I mean, anytime a store's name is on a Reddit, it's done though. It's game over. Because it doesn't matter if the store now delivers or not. They have the reputation that they don't deliver and that they're scamming. And therefore, people who have never ordered, never received a tracking number, will post on Reddit, oh, they did this and I ordered $1,500 of this and this is my fake tracking number, which doesn't even have the right amount of digits in it. Just so they can tear down this store. Even though they've never been there. They've never met the owner. They've never even, they don't live in um, this area. There's people who leave you a one-star review because magic cards are not free. And they would like it if you gave them some free magic cards. Gave them $1,000 of free magic cards. Thank you. And, you know, I just don't see this in any other community. It's so, like, it blows my mind. Like, and you might pick, oh, well, why didn't you make it public? But, I mean, at some time, like... You can't fight it anymore. It's just, you just give up. You're just like, okay, fine. You can have your free cards. Go away, please. That's how this guy feels. I know exactly how this store feels because I too made the decision not to carry magic products anymore because I had these same problems of the fake reviews and, you know, the things and the lies and the, oh, you got posted on Reddit now and everyone thinks that you're like a scam and it doesn't matter. These are not real customers. And your real customers, the ones that come to your store, the ones that buy $5,000 of dual lands uh, at a discount, they're happy. They're super happy. I mean, come on. You're buying dual lands at what, 25% off or 20% off? Like, why would you not be happy? You're buying, what was it, um, moxes and diamonds and all, all these lines eyes. And for 25% off TCG lows, like, yeah. For near mint cards, yeah, go for it. I mean, why would you not do this? I mean, it's just so... It's so obvious that this is something that you... That these customers, your true customers, are very happy with you given the prices and they keep buying, they keep coming back and buying another 5000 another 5000 And yet, all you have are these one-star reviews from people who have never been there before. It feels bad, and I can show you them. I can show you all their one-star reviews from, like, Doom Tomb and all these. I mean, it's such fake names, right? Like, these couldn't even be real customers. And um, that's why, at first, I stopped selling online. So I didn't sell Magic Cards online anymore. I still sell anime figures online, but not Magic Cards. I still sell Pokemon ca cards online, but not Magic Cards and Legos. Because um, then I was like, okay, so if I don't sell online, then maybe... These are the people leaving the bad reviews. And then my local customers, I know them by name and they come here every day and they, they're very friendly. Um, those will be my real customers. But that turned out to be not true at all. We got even more negative reviews. And I was like, these are not customers. These are just people watching my YouTube channel and giving a negative review because they dislike my YouTube channel. These are the same people who even before watching the video will thumbs down the video, right? Within one second. And they're subscribed. And it's really interesting because you know they're subscribed, otherwise they wouldn't. And then you know that they, they're they the 1% that actually click the channel icon bell, right? No one clicks that stupid bell. But they're, the, they're, they're gonna click it specifically so they can give you a down vote as the first watch of the video. And I don't know what is going on here, but like, how can any store survive this? Like, it's a miracle that the magic store can still exist in today's society. Like, it truly is, because I have a business sense. I've run businesses before. Um, now, my employee selection was terrible, okay? So, yeah, that's a negative, right? It was very bad. And my location could have been better. You know, I, I do agree that the location was a problematic could have maybe put in a better location, 
But if I cannot run a local game store with a business plan, with a CPA, with, you know, margins, like understanding margins with a point, uh, uh, some places don't even have a POS system. So they don't have no idea how much money they're making or losing or what products are selling. That's why they carry Warhammer, by the way. <laughs> the reason, that, the way that you know a store does not have a POS system is if it carries Warhammer because Warhammer sits for years. So if you had a POS system, you would learn very quickly not to carry Warhammer. Anyway, small aside. This existence for a store owner is hell. That is my final conclusion after stepping away from it for a few years. I can tell you it was hell. <laughs> Bye, guys.